Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. So we did get some great new updates about Tesla's humanoid robot at the earnings call. And Lars Morevi also talked about Tesla's secret power that he doesn't believe anyone else has, not even the Chinese, at the interview at the Tesla takeover. So I think Tesla is setting themselves up to become the most advanced AI and robotics company on the planet with Optimus Robot because no one else is thinking as big as Tesla or thinking as far out in the future as Tesla and doesn't have Tesla's secret sauce as Lars talked about. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. So Elon Musk gave some nice updates about the Optimus robot at the earnings call and Nick summarized it very nicely in this post. Optimus 3 is the right design to go to volume production. It's a significant redesign from version 2, in fact almost nothing stays the same. Gen 3 Optimus will have agility roughly equal to an agile human. Every part of it is designed from scratch by Tesla, exquisitely designed with no significant flaws. Prototype expected by the end of 2025, full production in early 2026, aiming for a million units per year as quickly as possible, potentially under five years. And as Lars talked about in his interview at the Tesla Takeover event, that Tesla is really making a generalized solution with the Optimus robot, just like they have done with their full self-driving cars. And he don't see that as much with the Chinese humanoid robot makers. They are making more specific robots, like you see many of their humanoid robots, still only have a stump as hands. And this is where Tesla is spending a lot of engineering power to engineer the hands itself. And and that is also why Tesla is able to make a humanoid robot that is as agile as a human. Something that engineers at Nvidia has talked about before, that making a humanoid robot as close to the real human as possible is the right way to go, because then it can become a truly generalized robot that will end up being able to do everything that we can do. And with the Tesla AI brain now being able to learn from video and they will have the humanoid robot design completely locked in by the end of this year, then it basically just becomes a question of teaching it new stuff to do. But because they have built basically a replica of the human form factor, there is basically nothing we can do that we can't teach it. So with the extreme fast development in the AI we see today, I think Tesla has done the right thing here, making sure that the third gen robots hardware is 100% ready so it can replicate anything a human can do, because then it's only a matter of time before the AI is smart enough to be able to to control that humanoid robot body as good or even better than any human can. And then it all comes down to being ready for extreme scale with the production of the robot and having the supply chain ready, because the hardware will be ready by the end of this year and the AI brain will probably not be far behind. And I think that is why the Tesla stock responded so positively to the big deal with Samsung, a $16.5 billion deal for chips that will go through 2033. That will be a lot of chips. And Tesla is also working with AMD and TSMC, so Tesla is not done making huge deals for chip in the near future. But this really shows us just how big Tesla is thinking. This will be enough chips for millions of humanoid robots and robotaxis. No one else is already working on so big deals with suppliers to get the supply chain ready for millions of humanoid robots. Just like you don't see Waymo making deals like this for chips for their robot taxis, they don't even have enough deals with suppliers on LiDAR to just make 1 million robot taxis in the future. There is not enough LiDARs being produced today 
combined globally from all producers to make one million robotaxis, even if all the LiDAR system for vehicles went to Waymo and no one else. So this really shows us that Tesla knows they have solved the hardware and the software part of the humanoid robot and the robotaxis within the next year or so. So they are getting ready with their suppliers for extreme scale. While the competition is still just making small prototypes and have not really thought about production at scale and have probably not even talked with suppliers yet. So even if someone should come out and show by the end of 2025 that they have made a humanoid robot that can do a lot of great stuff. But if they have not started to talk with suppliers and make huge deals like Tesla just did, they will not be ready before a year or two out in the future and simply not be ready for the scale that Tesla will. And I think people will be shocked about how fast this is going to go because Tesla is not like other companies, not even the Chinese ones, because at Tesla, everyone is working together from the designers to the people in manufacturing and in automation and material science and so on. They are all in the same building and are all working together to make a new product as Lars also explained in the interview at the Tesla Takeover event. What is it about it that allows Tesla to build much of this machinery in-house that builds your machines? Right? What's the advantage of that? And how does it help you move faster or innovate faster? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, we just talked about with working with Franz and not being able to say no. Well, one of the superpowers we have at Tesla is like our automation groups and our manufacturing engineering departments. You know, they're just a, like, I think about the 6,000 people that work for me, about 2,000 of them are in automation and, and you know, machine building. You know, about, you know, 1,800 are in manufacturing engineering and about 1,800 are in design engineering. And then you got, you know, support and technic and technicians and, and things like that. So it's like really a third, a third, a third. Um, and when I, when I think about that, it's like, why, why is that so important? Well, when you invent something new and no one's ever made it before, it's much easier to have the team that's going to build the machine on your team so you don't have to work through these layers of, you know, like even stupid things like I need a quote from a vendor to supply the machine. And like that takes two weeks. And then they, they got to check with their suppliers. And that takes another two weeks. And you end up with this stack of like timelines that like really two thirds of it is just back and forth between different companies and different levels. And, you know, in the end, you're translating that same goal of whatever it is you're trying to make through that same bureaucracy of, of, of you know, tiers of, 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 of companies. And so at Tesla, it's like, hey, I want to make this thing. I don't know how to. And you're like, okay, let me call the guy who, or the girl who is like most closely made a machine that's built this before. You call them into the room and they come in the room and they're like, hmm, well, I could do it making, you know, like the panels on, well, not that one, but on the cyber cabs. You know, when we were doing that idea of like, how do we make these panels that are, are paint, look like paint, but aren't paint and like are super easy to replace and, and durable. And so we brought, like, you know, a design engineer, and we had Franz's color team in there, and then we had the plastics team in there that builds the plastics machines. And then we're like, you know what, though? We need to change the materials. So we brought the materials teams in, and Mir's here somewhere. He's a big part of that. Um, and, like, you, you can't do that in many companies. It just doesn't exist to the level of expertise we have. And so that might be a two-hour meeting, and you come out with an actual idea of how to make something real. Um, and then you go do it. And so that speed is just like all throughout that process that just takes away months and months of iteration. And, you know, I, I like building Optimus and building this is the same thing. It's like we had to invent new automation equipment with a level of precision that most people don't use, maybe except in like the chip industry. But we're talking about like chips are this small and they don't weigh that much. And we're talking about doing it on a, you know, 65 kilogram humanoid robot. I mean, the same level of precision. So we had to go all the way back to the machine, for, you know, our machine builders in Germany and say, we're going to build a new frame and the precision is going to be like micron level and it's going to move super fast because we got to build, you know, thousands of these things a week. And then, so then we were like, reinvented the machine so that it has more precision and it moves faster. And like, I don't think those companies you were talking about in China are, are doing that, that are building robots. And that's, that's what, I get super excited about that. I wish more people got excited about it. Like, it's the coolest part of working at Tesla.
Yes, this is what sets Tesla apart from everyone else and why I believe Tesla can, in fact, build something very special that has not existed before, like a generalized humanoid robot. They have all the ingredients and talent in-house. Tesla has not just made a robot like many others have. They have also invented the machine that built those robots that is extremely precise and can build extremely fast, as Lars explained. So Tesla is not just building the machine, the humanoid robot. They are building the machine that builds the machine, all in-house. The amount of engineering power Tesla has in-house, I think, is unmatched in the industry. And because Tesla is now going to collaborate with Samsung on chip manufacturing as well, as Elon wrote, he will personally be walking the production line to improve the efficiency and speed. So Tesla is now also learning about chip manufacturing by collaborating with a chip manufacturer. So Tesla is really setting themselves up to become an AI and robot powerhouse. And the Optimus Gen 3 that we will hopefully get a peak of by the end of this year when it's ready for volume production, I think it will be something really special. The perfect human form factor with an AI brain that will be hard to match and with production and supply chain ready for millions of humanoid robots being built much sooner than people think. The future is looking very exciting. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.